this uh, meeting so that um, folks that are not able to join us um, will be able to participate. Um, and I am continuing to admit people as they come in. So I am so glad that you were all able to join me for this town hall meeting. We want to set some uh, norms, actually kind of moving forward and let you know a little bit about what's gonna happen in this meeting. So Ms. Garza and I are co-hosting co this meeting. Um, Paige, do you wanna say hello? Uh, yeah, can everybody hear me right now? Laura, can you hear me? I can hear you. Okay, great. H hello, everybody. Good evening. Thank you so much for being with us. Uh, and hopefully in these uh, crazy times, we'll be able to answer a lot of questions for everybody. So as we move forward at this meeting, please keep yourself muted during the meeting because we have a lot of folks that are, that are in the meeting um, with us. So if we all were talking at one time, it'd be a little crazy. Um, so uh, please keep yourself muted during the meeting, um, unless of course we get to a question and answer session and then you can raise your hand and let us know that you have a question. Um, tonight's meeting agenda is gonna kind of cover some core areas. We're gonna cover um, what we're calling GLOW Virtual Academy. We're gonna talk about technology access. We're gonna talk about emotional and social supports for kids and for families. And we're gonna talk about triaging and helping to support family needs during this time. If you have questions um, as we're going through the meeting, you can either submit them um, through the Google form that I sent out, or you can submit them through um, the chat feature. Ms. Garza and I will be uh, looking at that uh, chat feature so that uh, we can answer your questions as we go along. But what I've tried to do, um, what I've tried to do throughout this uh, event is um, uh, make sure that uh, I got a lot of your questions through that survey so that I can um, anticipate what they're gonna be and make sure that I'm, I'm hitting the highlights um, that were really important. So I'm not gonna answer these questions now, but I'm wanting to throw this slide out there and give you a little preview. So these were the, the highest um, amount of uh, the, the, the questions that were asked most often in the, in the parent and family survey that I sent out. I wanted to throw this up there so you can anticipate that I'm gonna be answering some of these questions during this, uh, during this uh, conversation. So know that we're gonna be talking about a lot of things related to academics, uh, but we're also gonna be talking about social and emotional supports, accessing technology, um, getting fa family supports as needed um, in, this, in this time. So, so know that that's coming. All right, so Ms. Garza and I have been working really hard to think through what we need to do to set your kiddos up for success uh, as we move forward. And so what we are rolling out is something called Glow Virtual Academy. So for the past week or two weeks, and then of course, as we finish out this week, we've been doing some teacher supported work um, that has either been with physical packets or online. It, it's been up to your kiddo about how they access that work. Um, teachers have been reaching out, setting up lines of communications with kids, um, setting up office hours, um, getting, getting kind of life together and in order in this new universe that we're living in. Um, on April 6th, we're entering into, we're entering into uh, our spring break. That's gonna be the same um, as normal. Uh, so April 6th through the 13th, we're gonna be in spring break mode. And then when we come back from spring break, we will be entering into Glow Virtual Academy instead of Glow Physical Academy. Um, middle school students will see their courses um, that they're signed up for, except for electives. In Glow Virtual Academy, middle school students will not have electives, but high school students will see all their courses that they're taking this semester, including electives. 
Uh, there's some new technology and also some new vocabulary that we've got to get a handle on in this uh, uh, Globe Virtual Academy world. Um, so I want to throw this vocabulary at you so you know what we're talking about. Um, Synchronous is happening in real time. So anytime something is happening in synchronous um, time, that means that it's happening in real time and that um, folks can um, tune in live, ask questions. What we're doing right now is synchronous town hall meeting, right? We're all having this experience together. Asynchronous means that it is not happening in real time. That is mostly what GLOW Virtual Academy is going to look like. Uh, in an asynchronous event, um, something has been recorded, kids go, kids go, I'm seeing somebody is saying that, uh, that the screen is not showing all of the notes, that they are cut off. I don't, I don't really know why that is. It's, Ms. Garza, are you able to see my screen? I am able to see your screen. Uh, perhaps going to the right hand corner and increasing zooming out the screen may help. It sounds like maybe the screen uh, size just needs to be enhanced. Awesome. So asynchronous is and to happen some other time and then kids or adults are able to, to weigh in. Please excuse my very chatty pack parakeets in the background. They, they love it to chat when I'm chatting. Uh, we have a lot of new conferencing tools that we're going to be using in this time of Globe Virtual Academy. Those are Google Hangouts, uh, Zoom, which you're participating with right now, or some video conference tools. We'll be using Google Suite, which is um, that suite of, of, of kind of, of online tools, which include Google Docs, Google Sheets, Google um, Forms, uh, Google pre Slides, presentations. Um, we also are rolling out a new virtual online platform um, for managing our, our virtual academy, and that's called Canvas. Ms. Garza, do you want to tell the folks a little bit about Canvas? Sure. So we chose the Canvas platform because this platform is more uh, kid and parent friendly for teaching a class online. So while we have a lot of uh, a lot of online features that we already utilize in our classrooms, like Google Classrooms, uh, those particular platforms were not meant to be standalone platforms for teaching courses. Rather, they're meant to help supplement instruction and engage students with their technology when they're in class versus replacing classroom time. Uh, Canvas is going to allow us to move into a platform that's really easy to navigate. When students log into their Canvas account, they'll see all of their courses right there in front to click. Um, all of their courses will be formatted exactly the same. All assignments and work will be located in the same places. So they will have the ability to really just learn one space and that will apply to all of their different courses. Our very first week, we'll be moving into a zone of, of doing some, some training for all of us in Canvas. So we'll talk about that here in a few minutes. And then all of our instructors are going to be posting and hosting um, uh, office hours. So this is a time when instructors will be uh, live online to answer questions, to clarify content, and they'll be using a lot of different tools. They could be using Google Hangouts or Zoom. They could be available by phone. Uh, they might be available through Google Chats or email. So our instructors, um, all of our faculty will be able to um, to, to integrate, engage in, in, and support kids in a lot of different ways throughout this time. So here's the, here's the lineup. Uh, March 18th, we went into virtual land. Uh, we knew that we were going to have to buy ourselves some time. So uh, we, um, we bought ourselves some time with some paper packets. We sent those home with kids. We've been kind of setting up lines of communication and trying to figure out what was going to happen next, as we all have been waiting to figure out what's going to happen next um, in the world around us, right? Um, so we are going to maintain that particular kind of setup through April 3rd, that is through this week. Then we're going to break for spring break. 
And then on April 14th, we're going to come back to school. Now, the governor has said that we are out of school until at least May 15th. And while that is what he has said, we are anticipating that there is a strong likelihood that we are going to be out through the end of the school year. And so uh, we have made a plan for what that is going to look like and feel like. So on April 14th, new online instruction is going to begin in what is what we're calling GLOW Virtual Academy. Um, so up until now, we've been doing predominantly review work, but then we're going to launch into doing new instruction. And this is going to be entirely virtual online. Students can expect 15 minutes of virtual instruction per class per day in each class. Mostly it's going to be asynchronous. So they're going to do that, but they're going to also do some work. Teachers are going to plan and deliver all of that instruction online through Canvas. They're going to hold office hours at least twice a week, but probably more, in order to support uh, students. Students will log in, hopefully daily, to Canvas. They also hopefully will log on to their GLOW student email. They will complete online activities and assignments. They'll go to their teachers for help when they need it. Um, and then they'll submit assignments as needed on a timeline. That timeline is generally weekly. Ms. Uh, Garza is gonna talk a little bit more about that in just a second. Um, so Ms. Garza has done an incredible job of working with a group of teachers at GLOW to put together a virtual academy on um, Canvas. Because uh, she has really been the team lead in how to make that all come together. And look, I really am gonna throw this over to her to talk about what GLOW Virtual Academy is gonna look like starting on April 14th. Okay, thank you, Ms. Hunter. So everyone is gonna get a course schedule that looks like this. And when I say everyone, I absolutely mean everyone. Sixth grade through ninth grade is going to operate on the same course schedule. We are all being thrown into virtual learning, so we're going to keep it really simple. So no matter what grade you are in, uh, this is what your week is going to look like. So let's just kind of look at this together. So the week of April 14th through the 19th, you see that there's preparation work, online discussion and assignments. So I just wanna break down what those are very briefly. Preparation work for a student means anything that they need to interface with to learn something new. So that maybe their teacher recorded a video of themselves teaching a new math concept, or there is a reading that their English teacher wants them to read. So preparation is how students are getting new information or new content. So every week there will be some type of new content that students will need to interface with. The next piece is an online discussion. So in every student's course, they will have an online discussion thread where every week their teacher posts a question to the class. And that may look very different in different content areas. And it will be the student's responsibility to give one original response, so they need to respond to the discussion for themselves. In addition, we ask that they respond to a classmate as well, giving feedback to their classmate. Yeah, I was thinking the same thing about that story, interacting with each other and having an online engagement moment. Um, but of course, they don't have to stop at one. They could be encouraged to talk to all their classmates while they're in there. But this is still an asynchronous moment. So it doesn't matter if it's eight o'clock in the morning or six o'clock in the afternoon, they can watch or read that preparation work at any time. They can interact with that discussion board at any time during the day. And then after they have completed their preparation work and their online discussions, they're going to complete their assignments for the week for that course. So that assignment could look like a lot of different things. Perhaps the teacher has asked them to complete a certain amount of problems in IXL, or they're asked to complete a writing prompt based on what they learned for the week. So assignments could really mean anything. Short quizzes, short writing assignments. We have asked all of our teachers to think through the lens of empathy and simple quality. We didn't sign up for a virtual academy, but here we are all together learning virtually. And so we wanna be mindful that 
not everyone has the ability to sit in front of a screen from 8.45 to 4 o'clock, nor do we expect anybody to do that. So if you'll take a look, April 14th to the 19th, when you're in a virtual learning zone, the great thing is, is that we're not held to the same parameters of Monday through Friday. So it will be an expectation that every student completes their week's worth of work in each course by Sunday evening prior to the next week. And you can see here, we already have kind of the points listed for each component within that week. So this will be uploaded the very... <laughs> This will be uploaded the very first uh, day that we are in Canvas and they'll be able to see this course schedule and know exactly what to expect week by week for all of their classes. Ms. Hunter, would you mind uh, moving into that next slide? Yes. Thank you. So for middle school grading, let's talk about what that means, because now we have this weekly schedule with these points on the side, which is different from a grading standpoint than we've done before. Um, and again, because we're rolling out a virtual academy so very quickly, we want to keep things very simple, six through nine. And so this is what the middle school grading scale will look like. The high school scale looks a little different, but the middle school grading scale looks like this. For the entire nine weeks, so April 14th through June 11th, we have nine weeks. In those nine weeks of time, there will be 10 discussion boards and 10 assignments total that are graded, each one being worth 10 points. So every student can accumulate 200 points for quarter four. And if you take a look here at the bottom, based on how many points they accumulate will then transfer into their quarter four standards-based grade. Remember, our goal is always a level three. That means we're proficient in the work that we're doing. And four, of course, means that we're exceeding growth. Um, and so a very clear dynamic of how those points will then transfer over into that quarter four grade. All assignments and discussions are going to be graded right in Canvas. So students will be able to look at their grades as soon as they are graded in the Canvas shell. And they will see the amount of points they're accumulating while they're working in that Canvas shell. And we'll just be posting that quarter four grade into PowerSchool once we've completed all of the assignments April 14th through June 11th. Now, one thing that we will be doing, any assignments or discussion boards that are graded, once they've been posted for three weeks, that week's worth of assignments will no longer be accessible to students. Uh, so it'll be on a three-week rotation. So for example, the work that's posted for the week of the 14th, three weeks from that date, students would no longer be able to go back and complete that first week. So it's gonna be really important that they stay up to date on their assignments. But again, instead of in middle school, a 66 minute course, we've asked teachers to plan not day by day, but for the full week with the expectation that if they were in class, it would only take them about 15 minutes a day per class. So not creating an overwhelming amount of work and really being empathetic to understanding that working from home, uh, homeschooling from home, all of these things are new to all of us and we, we all very much understand. Our goal is just to make sure that we're continuing to learn as we figure out this new normal. So our expectations of students are very clearly these. Uh, around 15 minutes per day per content area of work. So for a typical middle schooler, that's English, math, science, social studies, and leadership advisory, that's about an hour and 15 minutes worth of screen time work per day per kid. We are very clear that um, it could be that they spend more time working on these assignments. It could be that they choose to engage in enrichment activities that are not graded, but that are offered by their teacher as ways to fully engage their minds. We are 100% okay with that, but we don't want students or parents to be overwhelmed with stuff. I am, I get it, I'm a mom of three boys, 
I am homeschooling my three boys, uh, one middle schooler and two elementary kiddos, uh, as I am doing my job. And I, I get that that is tough and that everybody has different expectations. So we wanna make your job parents as easy as possible. So around 15 minutes per day per content area, all students will follow the GLOW virtual learning expectations outlined in leadership advisory during week one. So we're going to spend a week in leadership advisory the very first week outlining what it is that they're expected to do and how it is they're expected to interact with each other. We expect students to check their profile picture of their email account or their Google account and make sure that that is an appropriate professional looking selfie so we want to discourage um uh you know lots of pouty lip photos or uh, photos with throwing up peace signs we want to keep this pretty professional professional looking looking selfie here's a critical one we want them to follow the school dress code during any live or recorded interactions with their peers and that really means from the waist up, if they could wear their GLOW uniform shirt during uh, any live or recorded interactions with peers and teachers, we'll know that they're dressed for professional success in this virtual academy. We need them to be respectful um, and school appropriate with their language at all times, practice good netiquette, all of which we're gonna talk about in their first week in leadership advisory and check their email frequently for updates. Ms. Garza, do you have anything to add to that? Uh, and just that we're hoping that parents in week one will join the leadership advisory uh, learning for that week. I think it would be helpful for parents and students to do it together as much as possible. Agreed. So recommendations from family for families is be aware of your, your kids' screen time. We don't want them to be on the computer all day long. Be flexible with time and work. We know that many of you are trying to balance a lot of the things happening at one time, other responsibilities, few devices. We want to help with that as much as possible. We don't want to stress parents out. That's critical. We also don't want to stress kids out. This is a stressful time. Uh, make sure your, your kiddo is checking their school email frequently. That's going to be one really strong way that we are participating uh, or communicating with students. Be aware of other websites and apps that your students are on. This is a high frequency time for uh, internet predators and we want you to be very mindful of that and make sure that she is safe. Um, we want you to set a regular schedule, include time for breaks and time for outside time and time for downtime. My kids get up in the morning and they go to school with me uh, from 9 o'clock to about 11 o'clock every day. Um, and included in that time is, is uh, some uh, work time, some chore time. So, uh, so setting a routine and a schedule um, is really great and it's good for kids. Kids thrive on schedules. Um, but note that virtual learning means it can happen at any time. So it doesn't necessarily mean it has to happen between 8.30 and 3.30 every day. It can happen whenever it makes sense for your kid and your family. Uh, and parents, we are strongly encouraging you to participate in week one leadership advisory lesson with your Glow Girl to learn about how this is working so that you can best support her as you move through this process. Ms. Garza, do you have anything else to add to that? I'm sorry. No, it's okay. Um... Nope. The second week, we're going to be doing a virtual spirit week with some fun days that we can uh, post some fun things to not only our Canvas shell, but to our Glow Facebook. So just be on the lookout for those days. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm going to go back to those questions that parents asked and make sure that I'm hitting some highlights for you. One of the really strong reoccurring questions that I got from parents is, will my student be retained? And here's my answer. The school year as we know it has not come to a screeching halt. We have three quarters of the school year virtually under our belts by the time we had to shift to a different way of learning. 
but we are still learning. We are still moving forward. We are still growing. The school year hasn't stopped. Our school calendar hasn't stopped. Your kid hasn't stopped. We're gonna move forward with purpose. So this is not lost time, it's just different time. So we are not gonna retain students based on lost time. That is not happening. If your student has skills deficits and skills gaps, uh, first of all, be aware that every student across the entire country has lost time. Be aware that every student in North Carolina went out at the same time. So we are, we are kind of all in the same boat together. Um, if she has skills deficits because of this, we're going to work to catch her up when we come back to school in the fall. We are not worried about that. So students will not be retained. Will students fail classes if they can't get online was another big question. We're going to talk about online access in just a minute, but just be aware that if your student has no way to access online material, that is not her fault. And we will not hold her accountable for that. However, if she has a device that we give her, if she has Wi-Fi access that we make happen for her, and she chooses not to access it, that's another story. So we will not punish kids in any way, shape, or form for not having access to technology or for Wi-Fi. In fact, we are working to move heaven and earth to make sure that kids actually have access to those tools. All EOG and EOC tests have been canceled for this school year. No students in our middle school program or our high school program will have to take EOGs or EOCs. The good news is we have had a lot of um, data already collected this year. Um, so we feel pretty strong that we have good data from NC check-ins um, and other formative assessments, Ames Web, uh, from the year. So we feel good about the data that we already have. We're bummed that we're not going to have data at the end of the year, but we'll start out strong at the beginning of next year. We covered spring break, so we are moving into spring break uh, next week with gusto. I know everybody is ready for a bit of a break. Um, third nine weeks grades and fourth nine weeks grades have been a bit of a challenge for us. Uh, you already heard how fourth nine weeks grades will be configured and calculated through GLOW Virtual Academy. GLOW third nine weeks grades will be made up of the work that students did prior to exiting out of school. I think we made the decision, Ms. Garza reminds me, uh, that we would grade up to the up to the last week that we were at school, but any assignments that were not turned in that last week that we were physically on campus, we will exempt because you, who knew that we were going to be going out forever. Um, am I right about that, Paige? Yes, we just wanted to make sure if a student missed an assignment because they were at a doctor's appointment or something like that, that we're going to just put in an exempt for that student because they didn't have the opportunity to come in and make that up and we don't want to hold a student accountable for a pandemic, so. That's right. Um, we have some kiddos, some eighth grade kiddos that are in Math 1 currently, which is a high school class. They will still get credit for that high school class, even though they um, are not taking the EOG. So it is okay, they're still gonna get credit. Uh, kids do not need to be in front of the computer from 8.30 to 3.30. Remember, our expectation is daily about an hour and 15 minutes of concentrated work. Uh, how do parents support their learning? Uh, this was one that came up a lot in the question um, survey that I sent out. Parents can start by participating in week one of our uh, leadership advisory lessons so that you know what she's doing in GLOW Virtual Academy. That's step one. But step two is uh, you can access her learning work alongside her and learn along with her to help support. And certainly reach out to teachers if you need extra support. They would be happy to chat with you to set up a meeting to, to help you understand material better or certainly do it with you and your daughter together to help support that work. 
Uh, will attendance be counted? This is a huge question. Let me, let me explain that your student has been counted present since March 18th. We have not counted anybody absent and we will continue to do so. That is by mandate. We expect in a Globe Virtual Academy world, your daughter to complete her work within the week that it has been assigned. That is really attendance. Work completion in a virtual academy is the way attendance is counted when attendance can happen at any time of the day or night because we are in an asynchronous kind of scenario. Paige, do you have anything to add to that? No, I don't. All right, perfect. We did have a question, Laura, uh, uh, that was privately sent to me about um, how we would start online learning. So I can address that. We are still in the process of building out our course shells, but within the next week, uh, you will, your students will be receiving a link or an email link to join a particular course, and that's going to be sent to their Glow student email account. So it's going to be really important that they connect and check that uh, Glow student email account. And when we push those out, we'll make sure to also push out a one call that those have been sent so that you know to check it. All right. And again, if you have questions as we're talking, I know we asked you all to mute your, um, to mute your, your um, microphones, but if you have the ability to send a, a message in chat, um, that would be great. Um, we have a question, what about the packets that they've been working on? Yes, what about the packets that they've been working on? Paige, do you wanna address that? Sure. So right now, uh, teachers are working with all students in their current office hours to support the work that we sent home. Um, I just want to give a shout out while we're all here to teachers that so quickly put those pieces together. I'm not sure of those of you that have kiddos, maybe in other schools, but Glow Academy teachers were really ahead of the curve in that, in that moment, and we're really proud of them. In our very first week, online we are within our virtual academy you will be reporting out your completed work in your packets that were taken home in your first week's discussion threads in your content area classes so you will have an opportunity to have accountability for the work that you've completed within that discussion thread and your teachers may be asking you questions specifically about some of that work. So there will be an opportunity for you and your teacher within your content courses to discuss and respond to that very specific work. All right, great. I see some computer questions coming through and a status for refunds for DC trip. I'm gonna address those in just a second. So we are moving in the next, uh, this week and next week into a place where we can check out Chromebooks to students. So we know that uh, there are many students out there right now who either don't have a, have a computer at home or are having to share it with a million other people in their house who are all vying for access to the computer, either that be parents trying to work or other siblings trying to get on, online, um, and we get that. So, um, so here's what's gonna happen. Um, we're gonna roll out a, a, a virtual checkout computer program. Um, we are doing that through a company um, called one to one risk.com that's they're going to be our devices um, from glow academy we're checking out our chromebooks to families but um, this is a way for us to make sure that any damage or um, uh, kind of loss to any of those devices that happens we're able to uh, uh, ensure them and um, replace those devices so the cost for checking out a computer from Glow Academy is $20 
for the entire rest of the year. Um, or um, if you have SNAP, TANF, or FDPIR um, uh, benefits, you get a reduced cost of $10. So it's $10 uh, to get that device and um, you will be able to collect a Chromebook and a charger from Glow Academy and be able to keep it at your house through the end of the semester, um, which is great news for you. Uh, and that means that she will have her own device that is dedicated to her. Um, all of our Chromebooks have a microphone and a camera on them to support online learning. So we know that if she checks a device out from Glow Academy, that she's getting one that works and for all of the needs that she needs it to have, uh, to have it work for her to be able to participate in virtual online learning. Um, the website that parents will go to in order to check out devices looks like this, one-to-one um, -one risk solutions. It is set up already, and I have a, a sheet that can walk you through how to do it, and I'm ready to walk you through how to do it on um, uh, for the, the online as well or on the phone. Miss Jalise and I are ready to support your needs. So um, this is the, this is what the website is going to look like. Um, and so what you're going to do is coming home to you via email, via text message, all the ways that I push out information to families, you're going to get a, a detailed um, summary about how it is that you can access a device for your kid. Uh, technology access survey was really helpful to us because it let us know um, what families uh, have devices at home, what families don't have devices for phones, um, and uh, also uh, whether or not you have access to Wi-Fi or not. Uh, Jalise Hadley, our college-bound counselor, and I are working really hard on Wi-Fi access for, for kids. If uh, you are one of the 13 people who has told us that you don't have Wi-Fi access, access at your house, um, if you're not one of those people and Jalise or I have not talked to you directly, we need to know so that uh, we can help you to get Wi-Fi access in your home to support your kid in this next nine weeks of virtual learning. Um, you will... Uh, Register with one to one risk.com and then you will come by and pick up a Chromebook from Glow on either April 8th or April 10th or work to arrange for me, with me another time to pick up uh, your Chromebook. That's how it's going to happen. Um, I'm going to stop here. I have a number. Um, a number of people who are typing in some questions in chat. I'm going to stop here and go back. Um, we have a question. Uh, somebody went by school on Thursday and um, um, they got the information that online classes are only available for ninth grade and the computer is only for ninth grade. Um, we have some students in ninth grade who are already in online uh, and working on classes through North Carolina Virtual Public High School. Those kids have been working online already all this time because their class was already online. Um, we are now just transitioning to move more, all of our students, not just more, all of our students online for this next nine weeks. We have a parent who's asking, is there a way to help families with paying for the cost of, of, of the Chromebook? And, and we can certainly push out information about that. Um, uh, all students are eligible, sixth through ninth grade, to receive a device. You don't have to be just in ninth grade. Sixth, seventh, eighth, and ninth graders can do it. Um, I will push out information about student IDs. That's the one thing that you're gonna need in order to register for a device. We'll push that out. I've just got to double check and make sure I know which ID they need um, from Liz Wallace, who's our operations manager. So uh, I'll be look for that information to come with from me within the next 24 hours and I can support that effort. Um, 
Student supports will continue at GLOW just like they always do. Um, it is our full intention to support all kiddos academically, but also socially and emotionally during this time. That's why we are going to continue leadership advisory. That's why our expectation is that GLOW faculty will be reaching out to our, our their leadership advisory kiddos uh, and having one-to-one -one conversations at least every other week, touching base with their parents as well to make sure that any needs that are, are not being met are, are at least heard and triaged by us. If we can help, we will help. Our GLOW student support team will be available to meet with students because this is a stressful time. Kids are having to balance a lot of things. Uh, their schedules have been um, um, turned upside down. They're working in a lot of different ways. So if they want to reach out and just chat with somebody on our student support team about what's going on with them, they can reach out and chat with Ms. Meredith Staley, our school social worker. She's going to be live and online Mondays and Wednesdays from 10 to 1 um, so that uh, so that uh, he, the kids can hop online and, and chat with her about whatever's going on in their in their heads. Uh, Ms. Jenkins, our school counselor, will be available on Tuesdays and Thursdays from 10 a.m. to uh, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m. Uh, she'll be live, ready to chat with any student who needs to. And both Ms. Meredith and Ms. Jenkins are available by for appointments on Friday if kids want to reach out to them. Any kid that's uh, currently receiving services through Coastal Horizon, Coastal Horizons has let us know that they'll be in touch with students uh, to discuss options for teletherapy. So be on the lookout for a phone call from them. Uh, our meal service is going to continue uh, in a modified way until it's no longer safe <coughs> for our GLOW Academy um, for our GLOW Academy staff to participate in that, in that program. Be on the lookout for a modified schedule from us coming out within the next couple of days. And again, we wanna, we wanna reiterate that our Say Something anonymous reporting system is still up and running. If somebody is having um, unsafe thoughts or engaged in unsafe actions, we need to know about it. Students, can, uh, students and parents can log online can send us an anonymous text or can call in and um, those will um, those those reports come directly to the student support team and administration and we will respond to them immediately. So there are lots of ways that students will get support from Glow Academy over the next uh, nine weeks. So again, what if my student doesn't have a device? You can check one out from Glow Academy and we'll walk you through how to do that. If she doesn't have access to the internet or to Wi-Fi in your home, I need to know about that so that Ms. Jalise Hadley, our school college bound counselor, and I can work to get you online. Please call the school. Please send me an email. Uh, get in touch with your, her leadership advisory teacher through the Remind app. Whatever it is that you have, uh, whatever channel of communication you have with school, use that to let me know if you don't have Wi-Fi so we can work hard to get that for you. Uh, middle school registration, an elective registration for next year is going to happen in the last nine weeks of the school year. Ms. Garza, do you want to speak to that? We just recently had a successful first uh, Phoenix curriculum week with a really great high school registration night. And then it was the goal that within the next two weeks, the same thing would be repeated for our middle school students. And then we ended up being out of school. So once our virtual academy is up and rolling as one of the leads for that project, as you can imagine, that is our first priority, is making sure that students are re-engaging with their learning. And as soon as that happens, we will push out information about middle school uh, registration because we need that to happen as soon as possible as well as we plan for next school year. Um, what, uh, well, who do I reach out to if I need help? Uh, First line is, of course, your daughter's leadership advisory teacher. 
Um, but if you need help with wraparound services, um, technology, Wi-Fi, food in your home, uh, if you are um, having housing instability or um, struggling because of, of layoffs, any of those things, our student support services is ready to help you. Uh, Ms. Meredith Staley, our school guidance counselor, Ms. Uh, Sharon Jenkins, our school counselor, um, of course I uh, and uh, Ms. Garza, we, we all would love to hear from you. You can reach out to us by phone by calling the school or you can send us an email and we will be more than happy to reach back out and touch base and, and figure out how best we can support you. There are several questions about helping with just the Chromebooks and knowing how to navigate a computer, especially if you have a student that's really new to that whole experience. Uh, our virtual team will send out some office hours before and probably even the day of April 14th. That way, if anyone needs to call in and chat with us, that they can so we can make sure that uh, you're able to turn on the Chromebook, log in, and get started into Canvas as quickly and smoothly as possible. So we will um, definitely push out information so that you know who to contact as we're trying those first baby steps into digital learning. Excellent. Um, EC services. If your daughter currently has an individual education plan, an IEP, and she is um, getting services through our exceptional children's department, her case manager should have already been in touch with you. But if not, we will continue to support our EC students uh, through this virtual world uh, with, the, with academic supports. And you will also have the option of participating in online therapeutic supports. Uh, if she is receiving speech therapy, occupational therapy, or physical therapy. Your daughter's case manager will be in touch with you to discuss how those services will play out and how it's going as, as they will be co-teachers along with their her um, general ed teachers throughout her courses to make sure that she is as supported as, as possible in this virtual time. We know that that's gonna be a challenge. Um, I know that a lot of those, uh, I, I know those teachers have been working really hard to reach out to families and make sure they're connected um, to let them know that, uh, that, that we are here to support them. Um, I heard some questions about the DC trip. I know that Liz Wallace, our operations manager, is working hard on, um, on uh, making that refund uh, piece happen. So don't worry about that. That check should be processed soon and will be mailed to your home. If your address is different from that that we have in PowerSchool, again, we need to know that so we're mailing it to the right location. I see a question about early college applications. So uh, we are still functioning as a school. If a student has applied to an early college, by now we generally have heard about it and have supported that effort. Um, however, if you have a very specific question related to early college applications, please reach out to Ms. Jenkins, our school guidance counselor, and she can support that. Uh, early risers program uh, is a, a great question. Paige, do you wanna answer that question? Yeah, absolutely. I was just uh, talking to Cape Fear Community College this morning. So everything kind of got put on halt. We were in a place of actually reaching out to parents and students who had applied for the Early Risers program. And here's where we are in that program. That program is still a go. Uh, we are just waiting for Cape Fear Community College to uh, give us some updated information, which I've been told will happen in the next week or so. Um, they're getting their feet underneath them as all of their students moved off their campus as well. And what we're doing moving forward, our Early Risers program next year is going to be a virtual program with Cape Fear Community College so that no matter where we find ourselves in the fall of 2020, that students that are enrolled with Cape Fear Community College and taking college courses will be able to access those courses uh, no matter what type of standing we see ourselves with COVID-19. 
So we were ironing out those pieces today to make sure that we could eliminate any potential hiccups that could come out in the fall. So as soon as we get some of those uh, specifics figured out with Cape Fear Community College, we're really just waiting on some paperwork from them. Anyone that has applied for early risers, and we're probably gonna push out one more time anyone that still wants to apply to early risers as a rising ninth grader uh, to go ahead and apply and let's see uh, how many students we have eligible to move into some college coursework starting in the fall. So our early pro risers program, again, is still a go. And right now, in context to the placement test, it looks like they may be exempting a few of those placement test pieces. So those are some of the details that we're waiting to hear ironed out, which is why I think we're going to have an opportunity for uh, several more students to apply to that program. And so we'll get that information out as soon as, as we have it. But again, I was in contact with Cape Community College this morning, and we're still a go. It is just going to be a virtual online class with Cape Fear Community College starting in the fall. So be on the lookout for that and any information that we have to tweak given this new scenario, we'll make sure all of that information is accurate before being pushed out to you. So we have a parent who asked, are there any specific web programs or software that's needed for students to have on their personal devices that are not requesting Chromebooks from school? <clears throat> Here's the deal. As long as she can access her Glow email, a Glow email, and Google uh, Google uh, Sheets, Google Docs, Google Slides, um, and the internet to support um, Canvas, which is a web-based program, she should be fine. So if it's a tablet, she'll be fine. If it's a Chromebook, she'll be fine. If it's a if it's a laptop or a desktop, all of those will be fine for her to be able to access. Um, if she's just relying on a cell phone, it might be difficult for her to engage in all of the chat features um, and program features um, because it's such a small screen. Um, so we're working really hard to get Chromebooks out to kiddos who just have a cell phone at their house so that she can have full access to a larger screen and lots of opportunities to type in. And, and just to reiterate for, for clarity, um, anything that you, any anything that you can use the Chrome web browser with is going to be Canvas friendly. So Canvas uses the Chrome browser. Um, so if you're in Chrome browser, then you should be good to go in, in context to using the Canvas program. Um, uh, and Ms. Johnson, you're right. Canvas does have a phone app. Uh, so parents, you should know that too. Canvas does have a phone app, so she should be able to access her work on Canvas on her cell phone. But it, just doing the work itself on, on a cell phone is kind of cumbersome. So we're suggesting that she have something other than just a cell phone to use. All right. You guys are doing a great job of sending questions. Uh, I'm going to stay online here and answer any more questions that you have. Uh, fire away. Um, however, uh, if if you don't want to hang out and ask me more questions or, or hear other questions from other folks, this is the end of our formal presentation. Um, but Ms. Garza and I are online to uh, right now to answer any questions that, that might appear. So what if we like put in the little Google survey thing that we don't need a device, but we just, it comes up that we do. What if you, your situation has changed, Alani, and you need a device? Uh, yeah. That is absolutely fine. That's totally okay. Anybody who wants to get a device can get a device. It might be that somebody um said that they have a chromebook at home but they also have five siblings who are all vying for that chromebook and you want to have just one for you to use that is absolutely fine any family that wants to get a device can get a device you just have to go through the the 
the um, device checkout process, which is that online piece, the, the rental uh, fee or waiver fee, and then you'll come by and get it from, from Glow. So absolutely no problem. That's a great question, Alani. Thank you. You're welcome. And like, if is it if you damage it, damage it, is it $20 or the checkout one, is it $20? To check out one, it's twenty dollars, and then there's a there's a a larger kind of a, a, another piece. So uh, all the information is going to be sent home, uh, and you can read it. But if once you get it, if you damage it or something bad happens to it, there's an initial um, deductible of twenty five dollars, and then you get a replacement or we fix it, um, and then you it goes up from there. So you'll look at all of that paperwork is going to come home, and you can um, check it out and and look at it. It's just, it's a pretty good deal. Um, hi, Miss Hunter. Okay, thanks. So. Yeah. Hey, uh, thank you so much for your time and all your help and support. Um, I have a question regarding the grading for this nine weeks. Sure. Uh, can you tell me about that, please? Uh, how are you going to grade the students for this nine weeks? For this third nine weeks that we're in right now? Mm hmm Okay, so this is tricky, right? And all of us are kind of in the same boat across North Carolina together. We're, we're navigating this together. So we are going to um, grade the work that she had already done up until a week before we got out. Mm -hmm. Any work that she turned in that final week can, can be graded, but we're not going to hold people accountable for that last week because uh, the week before um, the 16th, so that, that, that first full, I think, week in March um, mm -hmm. will be the last week uh, before we before we we left uh, because of COVID nineteen, that mm -hmm. week is an uh, is not a graded week. Um, so we'll take the grade up until that moment, and we'll enter that into Power School. Mm -hmm. That'll be her her third quarter grade. Um, the work, um, the the very first discussion question that she will have in um, in uh, her fourth nine weeks. Uh, in Glow Virtual Academy will be related to the, the three weeks of work that she has had uh, in her life at home for the past couple of weeks. Mm -hmm. um, and that grade will go on the fourth nine weeks. Oh, okay. Okay. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. I have a question. Yes. Okay, so uh, I know you guys are like passing out food and where parents can come and get it, but what about parents who aren't able to get there and they have work? Will there be anybody delivering food to their houses? So that's a great question. We are delivering food to uh, four different communities in town. Um, we are delivering food to Greenville Loop Village, to Vista Village, to Tidewater Plaza and to Oak Court. Um, we, have, we have settled on those locations based on need um, and also looking very strongly at where New Hanover County Schools is making food available and delivering food. If you are in a situation where New Hanover County Schools' is food delivery service, you can, you don't have to get food from Glow. You can get food from any, um, any of the New Hanover County Schools uh, sites as well. Um, and we are feeding kids that are not Glow kids too. Um, we are all in this boat together. So if you are um, in a situation where the food sites for New Hanover County Schools isn't working and Glow Academy's food sites aren't working, I need to know about it. If you could reach out to me or Ms. Staley and let us know what that need is, we'll work on um, a solution, okay? Hi, Ms. Hunter. Okay, thank you. Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Um, my question is with checking out a Chromebook. Will my daughter have access to go on Facebook and YouTube and kind of just play around on it rather than 
the reason we would be checking those items out or are there actual mandated blocks that are on these Chromebooks? So that's a real challenge. So um, when she logs on to, um, on to your Wi-Fi at your house, um, she will have a, a, a different kind of access than, mm -hmm. um, than she would if she were on my campus, right? Okay. Now there will be some trackable pieces. So if she takes a device from Glow Academy, she will log on to that device using her Glow Academy log on. That's the only way she'll be able to get in. Mm -hmm. um, and we will have a running record of where she's gone and what oh, she's perfect. But, uh, but, but the, the same firewall will not exist at home that it does at school. Does that make um, sense? If, if you guys notice, however, though, that a student spent four hours on YouTube um, and they're not turning in any work, wouldn't you send a message out to the parents notifying them that their student is not even attempting? 100 percent yeah absolutely yeah we're, I mean, we're a team together yeah for sure okay at the end of the day a lot of us parents we still have to work so with checking out the chromebooks we would be trusting our children to continue their studies as much as possible and with going virtual i mean obviously there's going to be limited hours that the teachers are able to do that with the students so not always will there be a parent home to micromanage those kind of things and what they're actually on i fully understand that yeah it's a it's it's kind of the the trade-off right in right. relationship to the zone but yeah that's um that's unfortunately kind of the limit that we have um, once they're out of our network um they're literally out of our network but the, the device still um, has the parameters of sign in and we still monitor kids through Google Suite. So, so we can have a, a sense for where she is and what she's doing. Yeah. Perfect. That's, okay. that's definitely what I needed to know. And All right. my child is right here listening. So thank you so much. <laughs> no worries. Thank Hunter, you. We yes, have several questions about working in the summer in relationship to next school year. Um, we've had two or three questions about going to school over the summer? So let me be very clear. Um, we, uh, I, I participate in a weekly um, conference, uh, teleconferences with North Carolina Department of Public Instruction with um, assistant uh, superintendents um, and am directly monitoring the North Carolina State Board of Education for any guidance and information that they push out. Um, let me tell you that um, there is not enough time in the summer to make up the amount of time we're going to miss right now. So right now, the guidance that we have gotten from NCDPI is that we are counting every student as present and accounted for. They are, we are in the zone of virtual learning. We have been since March 18th. That will continue. And because we are in that zone, we will, uh, we will not be making up time in the summer. Uh, we will be ending our school year when we had already scheduled it to be ending, which is June 11th. I see a question, is there a limited number of Chromebooks to be checked out? Like you snooze, you lose kind of situation? No, I think we have enough check um, enough Chromebooks at Glow Academy to be able to put one in every student's hand right now. So if there are plenty of Chromebooks. Everybody who needs a Chromebook will be able to get a Chromebook. Um, I see. Um, students will have a spring break. Yep. Um, we're not going to have to work over the summer, like I just said. Um, and um, again, we are here to support you. If you need assistance with technology, with Wi-Fi access, with learning how to navigate Chrome, with getting food, um, all of those things, uh, we are ready to support that. I see a question 
about the eighth grade formal. Unfortunately, when we are in a zone of social distancing, there are things that we have to forego. Uh, and likely one of those things is going to be an eighth grade formal this year. But we will work really hard to come up with a game plan for how to give those kids that kind of experience when it's safe to come back together. Um, yearbooks. We are working on putting together yearbooks for kids. Unfortunately, our spring picture day is not happening. So we um, are going to have to be creative, but uh, we will have yearbooks for kids this year and they will be able to, to get those and have those to commemorate this year, including very distinctly a COVID-19 chapter, which will become a part of history, I suppose. Um, I see some folks that are weighing in. Um, this presentation will be sent out to everyone uh, along with the recording. So you can listen to the recording again, or you can just review the, the presentation slides. That's fine. Um, I have another meeting with high school parents in about 20 minutes. So I'm going to wrap up this conversation um, and say good luck, be safe. Um, and, uh, and uh, we are here to support you and your kiddo going forward and we miss, we miss you all. Thank you for participating. All right, Paige, I'm gonna end recording.